Hey guys, it's Electra from the Reef Tank, and um, so this will be under the crazy story category. Um, I went to get a bio cube that was gently used off of Craigslist, um, 29 gallon bio cube to be exact. When I got there, um, the tank was set up, which they told me it was, so I was like, well, it's okay, we'll break it down and I'll take it and it'll be all good. They didn't tell me when I got there that there were two um, true percula clownfish in it. So I get there and there are these clownfish swimming around in it and I'm like, oh, I don't need the clownfish, no thanks. Like, I'm just here for the tank. But, uh, you can keep them, put them in your 55 gallon tank that's sitting right next to the 29 gallon tank. Funny thing too is the 55 gallon tank was like a reef setup, super nice, looked like it was kind of kept up but it was still kind of gross. The 29 however was absolutely filthy and disgusting and I can't even believe that those clownfish were alive. Um, also the clownfish are three years old, they're a mated pair that uh, lays eggs once a month and they had just laid eggs in their tank. Um, so that's pretty cool, you know, like reproducing in captivity. Kind of, kind of big deal. I mean, clownfish are one of the easier species of fish to do that, but it's really awesome to see like an actual, like super pair bonded um, pair, you know, of clownfish. It's kind of a big deal. So I, I thought that was really sweet. Um, they're really cute until I was like, well, why don't you want them? And he's like, oh, we'll put your hand in the tank. So I opened it up and I put my hand in there. The female runs up to me and just starts attacking me. Like she is chomping on me, she bites my hand, she rips off a chunk of my skin and I start bleeding and so I'm running around their house like, ah, oh my god, it's a clownfish and it attacked me, oh, where's your sink, I need to wash my hands, I need soap, there's probably bacteria getting into my little cut and ah, I'm like freaking out and stuff and it's like not good. Um, so I washed up and then we took the fish out and put them into like a sterilite container or whatever, but then I, w I was like, so I still don't want them. I'm like, I have clownfish in my tank at home, I can't put them in there, they'll kill each other, or they'll fight and die, and I don't have a tank set up to put the clownfish in, or anything to keep them in, for that matter. The people were then like, well, we don't want them, because they're so mean, and if we put them in our 55-gallon tank, they'll still bite us, and they'll bite our other fish, and they'll be really territorial, so we don't want them. And I was like, okay, well, what are we going to do? There was, like, this super awkward pause where we're just standing there, and I'm, like, in this stranger's house, like, siphoning water out of their tank, like, tearing down this tank, like, pretty much by myself, because the guy just kind of stood there and watched me, which was sort of creepy, and, um, anyways... And that, while I'm doing this, he's all like, you know, this is salt water. That requires more work than fresh water. And I'm like, don't talk to me. I know what I'm doing. Like, <laughs> you know? So anyways, um, they're like, oh, okay. Well, since we don't want them, you don't want them. Then after you leave, we're going to flush them down the toilet. And I was like, you're going to flush them down the toilet? And they're like, yeah, if you don't want them and we don't want them, we're just going to flush them. I'm like, you can't flush them down the toilet. They're clownfish. And they're, like, pair bonded and they're in love, like, fish love. And I, I'm like, they, uh, no, you can't flush them. That's not cool. That's not okay. And they're like, well, we don't know what else to do with them. And so I was like, okay, fine. Put them in one of my Sterilite containers and I'll take them home and I'll find something for them or I'll figure something out for where they can go. Um, so we put them in the Sterilite container, packed up the tank, drove to my house, immediately grabbed my 10 gallon that I usually use as like a QT, like quarantine tank. Um, so I got that set up with like my little heater and my little power head, super ghetto, super imprompt. It's, they're sitting in my kitchen actually on this tank like above my dishwasher. Like how ghetto is that? Like totally not planned at all. Um, so they're there. I mean, I'm going to show them to you in a second. Um, but I planned on bringing them to my local fish store and just giving them because my my um, people are super super nice and I don't want them I don't want any money for them I just want them to find a good home because they're so the female's so territorial I don't think she could be put into another tank with other fish unless it's a really big tank um, she's just really aggressive like she's very mean like I mean she's very like into herself which you know females are always kind of crazy if you know what I'm saying but um, no so 
We'll see. I mean, my fish store is closed today, and I got them yesterday on a Sunday. They're closed on Monday, so they'll be open tomorrow. So I'm going to bring them in first thing tomorrow, and I hope they take them. I called the zoo, even. I called the zoo, and I was like, hey, will you take these clownfish that somebody was going to throw down the toilet? So I saved and brought to my house, and they're sitting on my kitchen counter. And the people at the zoo were like, no, that's not how we take animals. And I don't know what the policies are regarding zoos and how they take animals, but I guess they can't take the clownfish, so that's fine. Um, even though they have a giant saltwater thing at our zoo, but it's okay. They're sitting here and they're fine now. Um, the female, when I put them in the in the ten gallon tank, the female got super freaked out, super aggressive. She started attacking her mate, her male, and nipping him. So he's got some fin nips from his female. I don't know why she's so pissed off. Probably because she doesn't have her own tank anymore. I'm putting her in something that's probably a fifth of the size of what her normal tank is. They laid eggs and I, I didn't take the eggs because I'm like, I don't know what to do and the people didn't want to give me the rocks that were in the tank. They wanted to keep the rocks which had the eggs on them, so they kept the eggs. So anyway, she doesn't have her eggs, she's probably super pissed, um, but yeah, she's, she was beating the crap out of the male. I, I watched for like four hours and was like kind of trying to like poke her away from him every time she'd go up to beat him and stuff and it was just really sad like I was like oh my god so my genius idea was to grab a pasta strainer and duct tape it to my tank so the females in the pasta strainer which I have an uh I have a Curlia Nano um power head pushing water under her so she's still getting circulation it's not cruel or anything at all um it kind of had to be done this is very temporary this is not how I keep my fish like it's a very freak occurrence it's only because of really this Craigslist nightmare and um, I'll probably never do something like this again. But I say the word probably because things like this kind of tend to happen to me. Like crazy, weird stuff. So <laughs> you just got to roll with it. So we're going to take them to the fish store tomorrow and hopefully we find them a new home. Um, but yeah, here's a little example of what's going on. There was also a peppermint shrimp in there too. So I put him in with the clowns. Um, but here we have the male. He's super cute super nice they're really good size they're um three and a half to like probably actually they're more like four inches i would say so they're probably almost to maturity they're three years old he is a beautiful little specimen you can kind of see on his bottom fins where he got nipped at by his mate um super sad this guy is very sweet and he's not not aggressive at all it's just the female like i put my hand in the tank this guy didn't bite me or go after me um just the female so, yeah, he is kind of swimming next to the pasta strainer where it, his female is. So he's kind of been, like, freaking out and trying to get her out of the pasta strainer, even though she was wailing on him and it was really sad. But, um, yeah, he's a good little fish. I wish I could keep him, but I can't. Um, you can see his fin nipping there on the bottom. Um, yeah, he's a little sweetie, though. I really like him. These are true perks. Tripercula clownfish, um, yeah, I just feel so bad for him because he just got beaten up by his lover, um, we got the little peppermint shrimp guy in there just doing his thing, he's just chilling, I put some live rock in there to make them feel a little bit more at home, I don't know how much that's helping, probably not a lot at all, but, you know, thought, it's the thought that counts, um, we got our little, our little heater, our little power head, just the very bare minimum, like I said, because this was not really planned at all, so we'll go over to the other side and I'll show you the female. I don't want you to see my house. It's really dirty and gross right now. <laughs> and then in here behind my cookbooks, we have a female. Bum, 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 bum. She is, it's getting all skewed because of the glass and she's not swimming up to the top right now. But she is a jerk. Like... She ripped out a chunk of my flesh, she's attacking her mate, so she got the pasta strainer because I could not stay up all night to keep her away from him because I was very fearful that she would kill him with how aggressive she was being and she was just chasing him around and he was kind of getting a lot of, um, you know, kind of like hyperventilation going for fish, which is really bad and it stresses them out, so... He was breathing real heavy, like super tired, getting beat up, and I didn't really know what to do. So I just grabbed a pasta strainer in my kitchen and put, like, trapped her in the pasta strainer, and I duct taped it 
to um, the side of my tank. So, I mean, it's working, and I have that power head aimed directly at her, so we're still getting circulation, so she's not really in danger. Um, and like I said, I don't keep my fish like this. This is totally random, and he's just so heartbroken. He's trying to swim around to get to her, but he can't, and I feel bad, but... I don't want her to beat him up. Maybe she'll calm down now, but I mean, I'm taking them to the fish store tomorrow, so hopefully they are okay by tomorrow. I'm hoping, I'm really hoping they take them at the fish store, because I'm not going to want any money for them, obviously. I just want to find them a good home, and this little guy is so sweet and so cute. Oh, I just want to keep him. Only him, though, not her, because she's really mean, but um, yeah, I mean, I've heard that clownfish get more aggressive as they get older. Um, I've also heard that the maroons are the worst out of all of them for, as far as, like, aggression and territory goes, that they're the most possessive. But I would argue that this is probably, like, I mean, I had a hawkfish once and I had to return it because it was killing my fish in my tank. I would say that this clownfish is rivaling the meanness of, like, a hawkfish. Um... Which is really weird, because normally you think clownfish are all nice and passive and stuff. And it's true to um, an extent that clownfish can be aggressive. Um, like, to an extent, though. Because, I mean, they're territorial, usually of their anemone or of, like, their area. Like, I mean, every fish kind of develops its own territory in the tank. So, I mean, they can be kind of territorial, and they'll go after other fish to get out of their um, environment. But this is, like, ridiculous. Like, I mean, normally fish are afraid of you. This fish was not afraid of me. This was, like, this fish right here, this one, she's, like, the gladiator of, um, of clownfish. She's, like, the Highlander, you know? Like, there can only be one, you know? And it's gonna be me and not you, human. So, it's kind of scary. It's, like, ugh, like Jaws, but in Nemo form. So, yeah, that's my crazy Craigslist story. And we're gonna be going to the fish store tomorrow to see if we can get them a new home and happier than what they were in the bio cube and yeah so let's hope because this guy is so cute and again I really wish I could just keep him not her him because he's a little sweetie he's a little cutie cute I mean they're beautiful fish I mean if you see their coloration and their stripes like they are great they're healthy there's no signs of ick or anything on them their eyes look really clear they're really great specimens. It's just unfortunate that she's so dominant. Um, so, I don't know. I just feel kind of bad for him. So, hopefully we get him a good home tomorrow. And hopefully they'll even take them. Because I don't even know what I'm going to do if they don't take them. The zoo wouldn't take them. If my local fish store doesn't take them. I don't really know who will take them. Like, I've never had this situation before. So, we'll see. We will see, guys. Stay tuned. Thanks again for watching.